Anyway, um, yeah, no, it's going to be really weird when we do meet because it's just we're going to just immediately start making love. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be gross. And, she'll, and, and Celeste is going to be like, be okay, okay. Yeah, she's going to be horrified. I guess I got to leave. The, I, I get got to get the hose, I guess. But um, Surrender this man. So I'm like a I'm a I'm a bad weather Christian. When everything is absolutely horribly wrong in my right. life, I, I need I need God there to blame. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. I was I was raised in part by Uncle Glenn Benton. You heard? So like that's part of my reasoning system. Like I need to like go listen to uh, Once Upon the Cross and, and meditate. I think that there is, you know, that there's someone behind all of this. You know what I mean? An entity, some sort of power or whatever that that that, that, that knows how rotten I am and no, it is punishing me. No, 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 no. Immediately yeah. blaming yourself. Oh yeah, man. I, yes. When you have nothing to do with it whatsoever. This is like you blaming yourself for the new Six Feet Under album. I, I, I can blame myself for the new Six Feet Under record too because I wanted it to be good, right? And because I wanted it to be good, God <laughs> stepped in, <laughs> stepped in and said, I'm gonna fuck this up so bad. It's going to be the worst. It's going to be the only irredeemable thing this band has ever done, specifically for shoe events. I understand this viewpoint. This is your fault. This is not Chris's fault. Nobody else's fault. It, Correct. This is fascinating. Okay. Well, this and, is... And I want to take a moment to apologize to all <laughs> yes. three people who were really fucking stoked on that record, hoping that it was going to be amazing. <laughs> Me and the two other people out there who were really, really stoked on that record. Guys, I apologize. All right. Next time we have, next time we meet at the fucking convention, um, we'll I'll, I'll take everybody out for pizza or something. That's like big that. of you. That's big of you. But I think who you really owe an apology to is Barnes because you fucked up his album. You fucked up his band. I did, man. And it's all I, your him, fault. him and him and Jack Owen back on the same record for the first time since the bleeding, and I had to go and fucking have high hopes. Right? <sighs> Fuck me. Right? Okay. Well, I thought it was my fault, but now I'm glad to find out it's all your fault. But uh, yeah, no. Cannibal Corpse have some song titles that are outright fucking hilarious. Like, followed home than killed is one of the funniest fucking things, especially because, like, it makes you think. I don't know. Followed home. I'm trying to think. Killed? Yeah. What are some cannibal corpse ones that make me uh, laugh? Uh, heads, heads shoveled off. Give me that a fucking one's, break. That's one of the most that's brutal ha- song titles of all time. <laughs> it's hilarious. Ins- but the story is hilarious. Ooh. I went to Nam and lost it. And now I have to bury people <sighs> and chop their heads off with shovels. Like, that's funny to me. It's so it, when it's so specific when yes. they have when it's when it's when Cannibal Corpse is like and this is also like these are the things that didn't work for me about that TV show Hannibal. These are things that uh-huh. when people try when when the when the the fetish or the drive mm-hmm. whatever it is that the, the the persona who is committing whatever is happening in the song, if it's if it's so bizarre and specific <laughs> and exact that it really feels like somebody had to sit there and dream up some sort of fucked up weird thing that somebody could possibly ever want to do to mm-hmm. like orbs or another person or whatever, I automatically lose interest. So like when with Hannibal, when like he's turning people into musical instruments. Oh, you mean, okay, then, like, when it gets too, too uh, to, artsy fartsy with the murder. Because those things can be done in ways that don't feel like you're trying so hard to like come up with some, I, I need it to not feel like they worked super hard on it. So when you say, obviously, this person went out and fucking put their victims it wanted to grow mushrooms from them because and then like the guy has like this explanation for it everything's connected it's give me a fucking break this murderer is this high concept really the guy's yeah. sitting around so no i agree with you it's much, it's much more like on the silence of the lambs level was perfect like thomas harris himself in his books gets it perfect you know whereas in this show which is based on his books is way more high concept than the books are all right let's find some really fucking weird shit that we can think about and then that's the thing uh, that this person's obsessed with uh, cutting out specific uh, I, I need the belly button exactly of person. I have to cut out mount the belly button that's totally how it felt episode to episode like each week like okay what, what's this guy's thing you know it's like exactly what, what, okay this are... guy turns them into butterflies by cutting them exactly. back like a shut exactly. up stupid yeah. There are cannibal court songs that are like that. You know <laughs> yes, what I mean? Yes. Like uh, uh, worm, inf- worm infested, right? Enter the graveyard looking for a female corpse dead for 13 years. 13 years? That's just She needs mummy. to be dead for 13 years? That's a mummy. Years? <laughs> Yeah, like, like why? Why is that the why, why is that the thing that makes it's it more perfect, evil, right? Schiller? Don't you get it? It's like a King Diamond thing. It's more evil. Um, 
uh, the spine splitter. What about the strangulation chair? How do you feel about the strangulation chair? Oh, that's chair? the that, fuck. That's the one. That's that was the one that I was like trying to say that I, when I was thinking of these other devices, it's like the specificity <laughs> of some of the devices that Cannibal Corpse comes up with is also that's I'm funny. Just like, what? How did you have to think about that long and hard? Like, but the thing is, I do know. I do like that they are at least trying to think about something instead of just going like, fuck it. Did a bunch of fucked up shit to women on those first three records. Yes. Four records. Because, you know, one of my favorites, actually, the the Gallery of Suicide, I think, is amazing. Like, I was like, I wish I, I had come really up cool. with that. That's amazing. And especially because of the way it was illustrated in the art. It's like, oh, you mean literally That's- it's a Gallery of Suicide. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> Cannibal Corpse sort of Cannibal Corpse has written the book, at least as far as death metal is concerned, for me, for the kind of relationship that I want to see between content, title, and visual presentation. And, right, right. So, yeah, I like that, too. Well, I, I, although, to be honest, I, I'm kind of sick of... Uh, it's Locke? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Locke. I know, uh, I wouldn't say get away from using Locke, but I wish Locke would do more styles for them. Like, I was super excited when uh, Skeletal Domain came out, because, like, yes, yes, he switched to a, a, a new style on this one. Yeah, it was really dark. And I really, yeah. lo- and it looked like, you know, kind of like a, a classic you know, yeah. old school death metal album or so. I really loved that cover artwork with that spooky uh, landscape. It had and it then, had Seagrave vibes. Exa- yeah, there you go. And then uh, I thought, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll keep doing this. Like that was my second favorite after the, the Gallery of Suicide in terms of the artwork. I, I like a, a landscape. I, 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 my favorites are always weird, spooky landscapes. So just put the gore in a spooky landscape and I'll love it. I, 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 I gotta say, man, I liked the cover for Violence Unimagined. I really thought that he was like, I think that people gave, I think that too many people were like, Vince Locke's going a little bit low effort. on. Oh, Sony's I didn't feel it was low numbers. effort at all. I just felt it was, it could have been, like it could have put that lady like in a, in a graveyard or something and it would have been fucking amazing. You know, like have a cool graveyard background instead of just this like blank canvas behind it. That's my complaint about that. Or those. since she's ripping a baby apart and eating it, right? Maybe a maternity. Exactly. Board. Vince Locke, look at what's going on in other death metal artists' works that are big right now and then like do your version of that. And, and then like that's like the worst possible thing you can ask an artist that's nasty let's use that <laughs> so I, I have a quick sidebar here do you have any uh, knowledge of Ron Jarzombe uh, blotted science yeah yes blotted science Th- that's some crazy it's, it's like the entomology of insectology or something like that it's it's all based around insects and he did this uh, video where he showed that uh, he he juxtaposed one of his songs over the cockroach scenes from uh, uh, Creepshow oh, 1 God. And, uh, and then he showed, like, see, if you just play the song over this, every single moment of this song is based on this scene. Because then if you listen to the song by itself, it's just kind of like a big, crazy mess. <laughs> you know, like you're listening to Spike Jones or something. Yeah. Even though I, I, I'm i not into scoring horror with heavy metal, I thought it was an interesting thing because he even based the timing of his riffs on the actions on the screen. It, it looks like at least, okay, so vermicular asphyxiation, the, the one yes. the slither is on here. I'm, I'm yeah, check that right out. Now. Yeah, check that out. It's it's very cool. Now we go back to her. Dude, this is wild. So Stephen King was really sort of my entryway into horror. And that was when I was too young to understand of it. And I was reading it. And when I was in sixth grade, I had a free period where I was a guidance office assistant. You and nerd. I remember reading a lot of... <laughs> yeah, dude. I was, Were you also a hall was, monitor, uh, you narc? <laughs> no, no, I didn't have a narc on anybody. I would read that shit at school. And like, it would really... it would. It, there were parts of it that like... I started laying out the things about horror that worked for me and the things that didn't. Um... Like Tommy Knockers, I absolutely fucking hated that boring. book so much. So boring. It was boring. I was like, are they? So it's aliens. That's what's. That's what this fucking shit is. Like, I, I just. I remember not being. And like a lot of the plot, I don't even remember. I remember. I remember learning the phrase "eat shit and die" <laughs> from Tommy Knockers. Um, All that Stephen King co- colloquialisms he throws in are, are always educational when, to young folks. When Stephen King started really fucking jiving with me was when I found Richard Bachman. Oh yes, um, yes, much pulpier. So. Yes, and so like, it, I, I you know, it sounds weird, right? But reading Rage changed my life. Why would that um, be weird? Not be- well, because of what happens in the book. <laughs> the, it was it, meant to change people's lives when he wrote it. You know, yeah, the like, point. well, it was you know, it's it, it was a, a very um, controversial 
it was in the Bachman books. It was, which was a, I actually still have my copy of that. Um, oh, it nice. was a collection of, it was that, it was the long run or the, the long, long walk, walk, the running man. Um, it was, uh, was it also, uh, uh Shawshank was in that or was that, uh, I don't think so. I think Shawshank was, oh, that was in, in uh, different Shawshank. seasons. Shawshank was in that one. Yeah. Uh, but like, I remember reading rage and being like, this is horror, but this is just everyday shit. Yes. Yes. And there was something about that that resonated with me in a way that really, really changed me. And that was around the time that I found Dean Koontz. And, you know, I don't know shit about Dean Koontz. I've never read any of his stuff except some short stories. So I'd love to hear more about him. From well, him. there was the, the first Dean Koontz book that I read was called Watchers. Oh, that's the, um, that's the and, one I know the most of, of course. That's yeah. And it was book. it's I think it's his most famous mm. book. Yeah. And it was, you know, there were like there were no supernatural elements to it. It was like all science fictiony. Um, that I remember being really into the book and my mom renting the movie for me and I remember watching oh. the movie and being like, wow, steaming piece of shit. This yes. has nothing to do with the stuff that yeah, I love they, about this book. They really fucked up that monster. Who escaped? GH3. The dark. And one of the Oxcom. Are the Oxcom and the dark still telepathically linked? On a biofrequency that only the Oxcom can receive. A search and destroy missile. Travis, is that you? Corey Haim stars. In Watchers. A lot of Dean Koontz stuff and a lot of Stephen King stuff for that matter. If you look at some of the books like Dolores Claiborne or Gerald's Game or something like that, there's weird shit happening in them, but like they're presented as these sort of everyday occurrences. Yes. You know? And there was something about that that was it, it, way, way, way interesting to me that I took off with and sort of didn't really get into other aspects of horror until later on in high school when I started watching like gory movies and shit like that. When I discovered Clive Barker, I really gravitated yeah. to him because he, he'll have he, he'll, he'll kind of ha he has a style that kind of encompasses Stephen King. He, you know, he doesn't get into as much folksy detail as Stephen King, but you know, when Clive yeah. writes something that's you know about an everyday person in their everyday life, it's so evocative and real. And then he'll you know stick Cenobites in it or whatever. And uh, so, so yeah. that really that's really what I was looking for. Whereas uh, I feel that when Stephen King. I've never, I love Steve and I've read so much of his shit, but I don't feel he's very scary. I've, I, I feel he's written one book, which is terrifying. And that would be Pet Cemetery. Yeah. I was even like, uh, when, when I was reading horror, I was like, this ain't strong enough for me. I need something that's going to really punch me in the gut. I went that way for a while with the extreme horror and the splatterpunk. That's an entire episode we could get into. With. Stephen King was not my introduction to horror. Um, and I don't know how old you how old you were at this point, but scary stories to tell in the dark. They scared the shit out of me in grade school, man. Like second and third grade. Yeah, it was just it was fucking terrifying. Now that shit was scary to me. I guess that didn't really come back until I was older and in high school I saw The Exorcist and The Exorcist was go. the scariest and continues to be go. the scariest movie I've ever seen. I agree. That movie terrified me and we are both non religious people yet that movie terrifies me as just like something horrible happening to someone like a, almost yeah. like it's a disease and, and or something like oh my god it yeah. really felt bad yes you know what i mean like at the end of the movie i felt bad like it and it and, it, and i liked it if a drunk director uh <laughs> wanders into a girl's room at night he will get his head turned all the way the fuck Funny, around I, I thought you were referring to friedkin <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there's an alien pubic hair in my drink <laughs> Nazi bastard. I suppose he didn't go bowling with gobbles either. You know what she's you know. done, your cunting daughter? Burt yeah. Dennings. It's like it's a guy we know. That's what's so brilliant about that yeah. movie. You see, in the book, they actually do all the groundwork of explaining who Burt Dennings is and stuff. And they, yeah. But somehow Friedkin was able to do all that in just like four or five minutes. And to this day, we know the guy. We know his face. We know his accent. Uh, hearing his voice come out of a backwards turned head of a girl who yeah. just stabbed herself with a crucifix and then see that is horror <laughs> that is yeah. so horrifying for something to be so psychologically horrifying without it being about gore is what amazes me about it you know well speaking of of horror movies did you ever see the ginger snaps movies oh uh i saw i loved the first one i think i might have seen part of the second one i don't think i saw any of the third so one. that's that's my favorite horror franchise of wow. all time, bar none. And each one's um, very different, in, right? Like they're not. Uh, yes, yes. I can only recommend the third one for people who are diehard fans of the first two because the third one's pretty bad. The second one is Ginger Snaps 2 Unleashed, and it is a cross between The Howling and Girl Interrupted, and it is <laughs> one of the most brilliant movies I've ever seen in my life. Like, incredibly smart and well-written movies. I love the female characters in there. Pre-Diablo Cody era. Yeah. That movie was very Diablo Cody. Oh, for sure. It kind of had the dark 
cynical teen tone, which I loved. I'm talking about the first one. I've only seen the first one. Yeah. But, and then I also just, it was what, you know, and clearly this is the whole thing. It was just so brilliant to be combining the werewolf theme with a uh, girl's coming of age and menstruation yeah. and, uh, you know, having sex for the first time and all this stuff. Yeah. And making that, you know, it was really such a brilliant. a brilliant parallel to be drawing, which had never been done before, you know. Creators of Ginger Snaps. What are you doing here? I'm on to you. Here comes the next chapter. As one of the most terrifying werewolf tales continues. Do you feel you're not alone? In the world of eternal darkness. Keep here. People are getting down. Wait. What the hell is that the monster? He wants to meet with me. How can you escape? How do we get out of here? It's on me. I wouldn't go out there if I were you. Ginger Snaps. You've got to see that second movie. Truly incredible movie. Copy that. See, folks, when he recommends something to me, I, I act on it because I'm a good friend, you know, and I care, you know, and I care about the show. I'm a piece well, of you shit. Know, I'm not care. saying anything. I don't care I'm about not anything. Saying, I'm not I casting judgments. I draw my own conclusions. I draw I my own anything conclusions. Bad. But uh, yes, absolutely. You know how I found out about it? You know how I was exposed to Ginger Snaps? How I even in my small little corner of the world managed to find out that it was real? I can't possibly imagine. No. They put out a soundtrack on Roadrunner. Oh, you know, I should have. God damn it. How did I not guess that? <laughs> yep. Soundtrack on Roadrunner. It was Who's the on second it? one, I believe. Uh, Glassjaw, Fear Factory, just a bunch of Roadrunner. That was the thing that Roadrunner did early on. So, like, remember that Faust, Love of the Damned, that fucking horrible oh, fucking cheesy ass beat okay, fake bro. Spawn movie? Uh, that was based on an amazing comic book. It was like one of the most gr graphically violent, sexually violent comics ever. I have them um, signed by the uh, the artist. I was I had to buy them like contraband back in the no day shit. when I was a kid, and they they're like the most beautiful. I'll have to bust them out and show them to you. But, um, it, I mean, like pornographically, like this would have been like I, I mean, just like the furthest level of filthy and evil, dirty, satanic comics. Yeah, you got to look up like like the satanic orgy in episode. I think it was like issue five or something. And it was just it was like triple X rated snuff yeah. porn, but also with like artwork that's fine, fine, fine artwork. The Tim Vigil's like one Weird. of the most beautiful artists you'll ever see in your life. So please look. I that will. Up. But, I'm um, curious well, now. So. The thing is, when they, yeah, you have to see the artwork in that, and then imagine what they did because you've seen the yeah, movie. Yeah, it's terrible. Now I saw it in the opposite because I was a fan of the comics. Like, there's no way they can turn this into a movie, and that movie is such a piece of garbage. Yeah, and it's made by Brian Usna, who uh, did you know right, the animator it, and, shit. and fucking yeah. Society. I mean, he did yes, Faust. who's a he. He's a bona fide genius, and yeah, he did that. See, so I was just like about his... to say, I, I thought that if I'd seen Faust like 15 yeah. years later, when I had gained an appreciation for movies that were so fucking terrible, they were entertaining. <laughs> but like, when I saw it at the time, I was in high school, and like, I, I had high standards. I was just like, first of yeah. all, I can't mm -hmm. possibly pay attention to what the plot of this movie is because it looks like shit. Like the, when he would fucking, oh, I get so messy boy. when I play. <laughs> and he would fucking <laughs> waggle his hands and his little claws oh, would wiggle God, because they were clearly it. rubber. It was so terrible. Based on the graphic novel and cult comic. It's a long way down. You won't even feel it. Life, death, pleasure, pain. It's all the same. Just sign here. Now go forth and mutilate. <laughs> Return of the Living Dead 3 and Beyond Reanimator. Faust, Love of the Damned. I make such a mess when I play. But like that was Roadrunner's, oh God, approach, yeah. to, Roadrunner's approach to soundtracks was just like, all right, let's just look through the shit that we put out at any particular juncture and we're just going to throw it on there in some random order. It's so funny to me that you are, are particularly a um, connoisseur of this type and style 
of movie soundtrack know, yeah. collection and that you actually own them and stuff. That's I've really learned funny. to love my captor, I guess. I, I don't know. <laughs> I think maybe you like those so much because they're literally each one is a fucking like precise time capsule of the, yes. the culture of what was cool. And then it's attached to a movie as well, which movies are always, you know, cultural time capsules. So I think you're, those are really, that's why I could totally see you being into those. Yeah, it makes sense. To me. Yeah, because the soundtracks also of the time, like you're saying, there was like, oh, this song is only on this. And you know, you'd never know, like this is never gonna come out again. Like it's never gonna- you, you, Like Nine Inch Nails. Right, exactly. The perfect Drugs, only on the fucking, the, uh, on the last highway sound. That was such sound. a cool video. Yeah, man, that was good shit. The video based on uh, the art yeah. of Edward Gorey, where I, I've been a with Edward Gorey since I was a kid. Yeah, have you read any of his stuff? You know, any of his, no. his weird, no. the Gashley from Tiny's? It's the most um, macabre, funny. Yeah, that entire Nine Inch Nails video, the entire aesthetic of it, design of it, and everything is based on, on, on his his drawings. And I, I, I don't I know. That. I think, uh, I think without any permission, but I think they might have just appropriated his look. I mean, some of this is, you know gory and some of it is just gory-esque like that's strictly gory that's literally that urn but an image like this is just sort of in that world that urn is right out of a gory image and the fact that the little girl's legs are sort of cut off but there's no upper torso is a gory idea it's not exactly from a specific image this landscape and this sort of clouds though those costumes are t lifted straight from gory they were okay good but see, you're not going to do this. I, 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 this is an assignment. I'm assigning this to you. You have to do this. Will you do this if I tell you to do this? <laughs> I haven't seen a rubric or a syllabus, but I suppose I will go okay. ahead and accept this challenge. Yeah, man. What, what, Here's give me, the give me your okay. assignment. But see here, I'm going to accuse you of something because you have plenty of time to watch stuff you don't like. <laughs> I watched all of Hannibal, hated it, but I don't have time to, to watch when Patrick recommends me to watch uh, Love, Death, and Robots, which is like 15 minutes long. I don't have time. <laughs> They're all sci-fi. The ones that verge on horror are some of the best horror content I've seen in like the, the last 10 years and shit. But uh, that's me. Ah, fuck. And the one I'm talking about is one in particular, which I loved it so much. I had to go buy the book that contains this story. It, it has um, Joe Manganiello in it as a as a okay. as a soldier that one it's really one of the best horror things i've seen it forever like i i've watched it like 10 times you might watch it and be like oh, that's all right i know why patrick likes it so much but i think you'll just immediately see like this is the most death metal-y fucking thing and it's super short and it's it's just such a sting of horrors that happen in a row and has this ending which is one of the most exciting and like oh, i finally get to see this oh i've wanted this my whole life and it's just a little 15 minute thing so um I, I just want to hear what you think of it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's in season two, but then there's one in season okay. one that scared the fuck out of me, and I thought, this is one of the most disturbing things I've seen in forever, and it's a sci-fi one. I think this is a story from the 80s, and it's called Beyond the Aquila Rift. And each of these kind of has a little sting at the end, like a Tales from the Crypt episode. That's how to think of them. It's real short, very scary Tales from it's the Crypt episodes. Honestly, I kind of almost had a nightmare about Beyond the Aquila Rift, but you'll see why, because it's just... Yep, that's my worst nightmare. Yep, there it is. Excellent. Um, uh, Very excited. See, I I like the punch of something that's scary and shocks me and is short. So, uh, yeah. uh, but I do I do too. So that's why I love a short horror story. I love uh, I love the old tales from the crypt. They have the, you know like a dumb twist at the end and all that kind of shit. I always feel like I want to leave you with a parting thing to check out. But you know, after today's you know. sobering, sobering, I don't give a fuck about you. about how you don't give a fuck about what I recommend to you. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I have. You know, listen, I, I, I'm going to watch <laughs> Enshrined in their whatevers and beyond the Aquila Rift. I've got Aquila spelled um, like tequila, right? Not every single person who recommends me something, I don't follow up on that. Necessarily. <laughs> I, I do. You and I, you and I have enough common. You, you've done me right enough times, and you and I also like even with stuff that we. Just, it turns out that we both liked but independently of each other, completely. Like I, I do check oh, out so the you, things. Wait, that you so you did, you did order that butt plug that I recommended, the the Chinese I vibrating go, one. I, I didn't. I didn't get the one with the, the spike uh, on it just because uh, I, don't, the Excelsior. I don't want, I know, well, I know that you like it to bleed a little bit, but I am still, I'm new to this. And so I'm trying, I didn't get the one with the spike on it. I also didn't get the one with the toenail on it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to go with the <laughs> smoother one. That for was right very now expensive. Yes. That, that one's, that's considered an NFT, by the way. Uh, listen, <laughs> if you want to put a real human toenail mounted to a dildo up your ass, you got to pay top premium for that shit because that shit is very expensive. Well, I'm just glad that you're um, taking my recommendations to, to heart. 
technically it's a salt, <laughs> right? Um, if you if you insert another, person. you salt it before you put it in. Is what why, you're saying? Yeah. You, well, you sprinkle. Exactly. Wow, that burns. That's that's why I bleed. Dries it out a little. That's bit. why I bleed. I use the rock salt. Yeah, to clean it out. Each two. Yeah, but anyway, I don't. I don't know how we got here. But uh, yeah, um, I am I am gonna I am gonna have to go here in a few. Well, sir, thank you. Um, uh, let me see if I got any. You got any business before I fucking log off? I do uh, not. Thanks. Yeah, I think you've covered it at all. All right, I'm going to stop the recording and say bye, you motherfuckers. <laughs>